In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome head tracked dance effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. Now, before we get into Premiere, you just need a static shot of somebody dancing to camera. You want to make sure that their head isn't traveling too far to the edge of the frame because it's going to make life a little bit difficult. But if they're moving around a little bit, that is completely fine. Now, I do apologize in advance for what you're about to see. I was trying to get some footage and apparently I can't dance anymore. So yeah, that's a discovery. So as you can see, we've got some really terrible footage of me playing up to the camera. But this is the kind of thing that we're looking for in order to do this effect. Now, essentially, we're just going to work through and move the head to a specific point. So in order to do that, we want to first increase the scale. So we're going to increase the scale quite a bit. So you want to make sure that you're shooting in at least 4K for this effect. And that should be OK. So we'll go to the very beginning. And we are just going to go into the pen tool, make sure nothing is selected. And we're just going to draw a line down the middle here where the head would be. And you just want to go into that shape and we'll just get rid of the fill, add a stroke and just increase the width of that to around 10 so we can see what we're doing. Then you just want to create another one across the center. There we go. And that is our grid line. So this is what we're using as a marker for ourselves. And now we just want to go ahead and work through the process of moving the video to match the marker. So we'll just lock those off so that we don't accidentally move the position of them. We'll go to the position on the video. We'll create a brand new keyframe on position. And then we'll go four or five keyframes over to the right and we'll just move the clip up to the cursor. And we'll go through that same process again and we'll just keep moving this video. Great, so let's take that back to the very beginning and see how this looks. You can see that looks pretty good, but I do need to go through and just clean some of these up because I was taking quite big jumps between the keyframes. Sometimes there was a little bit of drift and we want this to be locked on through most of the frames. So for reference, I'm using the center of my eyebrows as a rough marker for where I want to be framed up in that cross. So we're just going to now go ahead and turn off this cross so that we can actually see the video clip. This looks pretty good. Unfortunately, though, you can see there is a lot of black filling the edge of the screen. And this is because I moved quite close to the edge of the frame. And this is what I was talking about earlier. You want to make sure the footage that you're using, the person's head doesn't go too close to the edge of the frame, because when you move their head to the center of the frame to get this effect to work, it's going to drag the edge of the frame and reveal that. But you can see the movement now looks really good. The head is in the center of the frame where it needs to be. So I'm just going to keep that cross turn off, but I'm just going to lock that so we don't move it in case we need it later on. Now, if I was inside of Adobe After Effects, I could use the motion tile plugin to go ahead and fill in those edges. So it would mirror this video over onto the black. So it would remove the black and it would just use a mirrored copy of the footage in order to clean that up. But unfortunately, we don't have that luxury inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So instead, we're just going to have to increase the scale. So go to the point where you feel like it really becomes a distraction. So I feel like here it's quite noticeable. Just going to increase the scale all the way up to 75, 76. And that's going to get rid of it mostly, but I just need to increase the scale again at this point. And I'm just going to move the anchor point, not the position. So I'm just going to move the anchor point so that it pulls the position of the video down. Again, we could see it there. So I'm just going to move the anchor point back to hide that. And that is pretty good. There was one small part that I need to go back and address, which is here. So we'll just move that up again. And that looks really good. Now, it was less of a problem at the end. So if you wanted to, you could create a keyframe on scale, move towards the end and then decrease the scale. Of course, you would need to then go ahead and adjust the anchor point. So we'll create a brand new keyframe and anchor point move towards the end when the scale comes back down to a more sensible number and we will adjust that accordingly. So this is what we now have. Now, if you were to do this inside of Adobe After Effects, you would follow all of the same processes until you got to the point where I increase the scale. There is no need to do that because we can use motion tile to fill in the edges. I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll jump over to Adobe After Effects just to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to make a copy of that video that we just created. We'll right click, select replace with After Effects composition. And as you can see, we've now got all of those keyframes on the footage, but now inside of Adobe After Effects. 
So I'm just going to go into scale and rather than having the scale animation, I'm just going to turn that off, pull that back down to 70. We'll also turn off the anchor point animation and just readjust that. In fact, I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to pull the scale all the way down to 65 instead. And when we watch this back, you'll notice we've got these black edges in the frame. But instead of using scale to get rid of these, we are just going to go into effects and presets. Search for motion tile. Drop that onto the video clip and then we'll just go output width 200 output height 200, mirror edges, and as you can see, it has filled that edge in with a reflection of this video. And then if we turn on the motion blur on both of those, it's gonna really help to cover that up a little bit. Now this looks so much better than it did in Adobe Premiere Pro. The only problem is we do have these like artifacts, so you can see there's a lens going into the same lens here, you've got the two poles. So it is a little bit distracting, which is why I would always recommend using footage where the head doesn't travel too far towards the edge of the frame. But there you go, that is how you do this really awesome head track dance effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and how you can one up that inside of Adobe After Effects. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.